To create a good color grade, you need to be able to focus on what is important at the time. Let's grab the check layer and place it on top of all three clips we want to work with. In pretty much every color grading tutorial that deals with skin tones, a common workaround is to use a draw mask to isolate the skin. So if I go back to the clip here, I will take my draw mask and just draw a little bit around here so I can isolate his skin tones to check whether or not he's on the skin tone line and check my scopes. How much time do you think you will spend on drawing masks? Yeah, it's 2024, we don't do that anymore. So let's get rid of the mask and inside the check layer, you can see that we have an option here called eyedropper mask and we have this little circle in the middle. So I will just enable the eyedropper mask and you can move it around and sample whatever you need. If you pay attention to the scopes, the scopes will read out exactly what you're looking at. So there's no need for the draw mask anymore. Let's disable the eyedropper mask and have a look at the core functionality of the check layer. Which color is brighter and which color is darker? Of course, this is pretty straightforward because we are dealing just with a gradient of colors. It's pretty obvious, but what about now? Or worse still, what about now? When adjusting exposure and contrast, color information will definitely get in your way. Because as you just saw, blue is much darker than yellow, for example. But if we adjust exposure and contrast, we only want to deal with the brightness information. To do that, we will enable the checkbox Luma only. Now we can see the individual brightness values. If I go back to the linear gradient, you can see, of course, blue is the darkest color of all of them and everything else falls into line. As mentioned in the beginning, of course, we have scopes to read out our image. So in this one, it's pretty easy. The sky sits around 55 to 60 IRE, and his skin tones are very well graded within the range of 30-ish to um, 75. But when adjusting exposure and contrast, I want to get rid of the color information because exposure and contrast just deals with the luminance of stuff. Let's disable the colors and check Luma only. Now I go to the clip underneath and pull up some color curves. I will just make a pretty minor adjustment to the contrast. I will park his brightest parts of the skin tones right where they are and I actually add another anchor point and then I will just increase the contrast ever so slightly. And I think something like this gives this image a little bit more punch. If we now come back to our check layer and disable the Luma only view, we can see the final result. This is before, this is after. Next, we want to work with color. And generally speaking, we need to ask three questions. Which colors are present? How saturated are they? And where are they? Okay, let's tackle these questions. The question which colors are present is pretty straightforward because we have the vector scope. We can see there's a lot of cyan going on, a little bit of yellow going on, some orange hues, and a little bit of red over there. The next question of how strong are these colors is pretty straightforward as well. The further something is to the edge, the more saturated it is. But now let's come to the last question. Where are these colors? And this is something where the vector scope won't help us. Usually I like to use the Luma waveform because this gives me a good indication of the colors that are going on in my scene. However, I can tell you there's a big issue with this image and we don't even see it. So wouldn't it be great to have the color information alone? Well, let's check chroma only. And here we go, those are the colors present in our scene. And as you can see, his ear is the spike in saturation and the red hue you can see here. I would say let's get rid of this because there is no need for that much saturation in this area. Just a quick side note, in color grading it is as important what you see as it is what you don't see because every distraction you remove you open up a little bit more room for what's actually going on or what you want the viewer actually to see. With the eyedropper selected I will just grab a little bit of this red hue over here and I will create another anchor point to protect his skin tones. Then I will drag this point down so we get rid of the saturation in the red tones over there. Okay, so his lips got a little bit desaturated as well. I will just move this over just a tad. Yeah, something like this. Pay attention to the vector scope now. This is before, this is after. As you can see, the saturation spike in the reds is gone. Before, after. The worst thing is that this is something we didn't even see in the beginning. We don't need these hues and we especially don't need them that saturated. Okay, let's turn off the check layer and have a look at what we've done. Before, after. Much more natural, isn't it? Moving on with the check layer. When working on a shot, your brain gets used to the shot. This means you're likely to overlook something. To prevent that, you can just flip it horizontally. As you can see, this feels a little bit strange and this is because we are not used to that. 
But this is what we want. We want a fresh look to spot everything. The next section of the check layer is the assistance section. If we have a look at the scopes, you can see that everything is rather busy. These pokeballs in the background will show up individually in the waveforms and sometimes this is just more information than I need. To get a bird's eye view over my shot, I will just enable the blur and increase the amount. And you can see the waveforms smooth out and I'm not distracted by these little details. Now I can tell that I'm roughly inside the range I want to be and move on. Underneath the blur you will find the saturation boost. Sometimes you just need to make the colors a little bit more present. Therefore you can enable saturation boost. However, I did leave the blur on intentionally because if we have a look at our vector scope, we can now see the color scheme at play. This is almost a triadic color scheme. The blues are a little bit too much towards cyan, so we can make a broad adjustment. Let me bring up another instance of hue saturation curves and sample these cyan tones pretty broadly. I think I will move these points out even more. Now let's swing the hue towards blue. If we disable the check layer, you can see that we made quite a big difference. This is before. This is after. Now we have a much cleaner triadic color scheme. Obviously you don't need to force a color scheme, this is just an example. 